Hello, gangsters. Time to read about your gangster granny and David Williams' gangster granny. Now, remember to pay close attention so that you can discuss the story after and talk about what happened today. We are on chapters 24 and 25. Let's get started. Chapter 24, Dark Waters. Just here, please, said Granny, directing from the backseat of the police car. Just opposite of the tower. Thank you so much. PC Fudge strange, strained as he, was unlo as he unloaded the scooter out of his boot. Well, next time, please remember that mobility scooters are meant only for pavements, not main roads, and certainly not motorways. Yes, officer, replied Granny with a smile. Well, good luck, you two, with the whole, um, cling film bubble wrap alliance thing. And with that, PC Fudge sped off into the night, leaving Granny and Ben gazing at the magnificent thousand-year-old Tower of London on the opposite bank of the river. It was particularly spectacular at night. Its four domed towers lit up, its reflections shimmering in the cold, dark river things below. The tower was once a prison, with an illustrious list of former inmates, including the future Queen Elizabeth I, the adventurer Sir Walter Raleigh, the terrorist Guy Fox, the senior Nazi Rudolf Hess Jeward. I lied about the last one, but... I would like to see Jeward locked up forever in the Tower of London for crimes against music. Now, though, the Tower is a museum, and home to the priceless jewels housed in their own special building, Jewel House. The unlikely pair of gangsters stood at the riverbank. Are you ready? asked Granny, her mask completely steamed up from sitting in the back of the police car for over an hour. Yes, said Ben, trembling with excitement. I'm ready. Granny reached out to hold Ben's hand, and she counted three, two, one, and on one they leapt into the dark waters below. The water was freezing cold, even with the wetsuits on, and for a few moments all Ben could see was black. It was terrifying and exhilarating in equal measure. When their heads bobbed out of the water, Ben took the snorkel out of his mouth and for a, and his mouth for a while, moment. Are you okay, Granny? I have never felt more alive. But they doggy paddled across the river. Ben had never been a great swimmer and lagged behind a little. Secretly, he wished he had brought his armbands, or at least a lilo. A huge party cruiser with music blaring and young people shouting chugged down the river. Granny had swum ahead, and Ben lost sight of her. Oh no, had she been crushed by the cruiser? Was Granny in a watery grave at the bottom of the Thames? Come on, slow coach! shouted Granny as the party boat passed and they caught sight of each other again. Ben sighed with relief and continued doggy paddling across the deep, dark, dirty water. According to the diagram in Plumbing Weekly, the sewage pipe was situated just to the left of Trader's Gate. This was the entrance to the tower only accessible from the river, where many prisoners would be taken to be locked up for the rest of their lives or beheaded. Nowadays, Trader's Gate had been bricked up so that the pipe was the only way into the tower from the river. Then, with a rush of relief, Ben found the pipe. It was partially submerged under the water. It was dark and eerie, and he could hear the echoes of lapping waves reverberating against inside it. Suddenly, Ben began to have second thoughts about the whole adventure. As much as he liked plumbing, he didn't want to have to crawl up an ancient sewage pipe. Come on, Ben, said Granny as she bobbed up and down in the water. We haven't come this far to give up now. Well, thought Ben, if a little old lady can do it, then I certainly can. Ben took a deep breath and propelled himself into the pipe. Granny followed close behind. It was blacker than black in there, and after he traveled a few meters, he could feel something crawling against his head. He heard an eek eek noise and could sense something scratching his scalp. It felt like claws. He put his hand on his head. He touched something big and furry. Then he realized the awful truth. It was a rat! A giant rat was clinging to the top of his head! Ah! Screamed Ben. Chapter 25 Haunted by Ghosts The sound of Ben's screams echoed through the length of the pipe. He whacked the rat off his head and it landed on top of Granny, who was crawling up the pipe just behind him. 
Poor little rat, she said. Be gentle with it, dear. But he was here first. Now come on, we have to hurry. The sleeping tonic chocolate cake I gave the guards will be wearing off very soon. The pair crawled further up the pipe. It was wet and slippery, and it smelled awful. Unfortunately for Ben and Granny, it turns out that ancient poo does still pong. After a while, Ben could see the shaft of gray in the, all the black. It was the end of the tunnel, at last. He hauled himself out of the ancient stone privy, and then reached down the pipe to help his granny clamber out. They were covered from head to toe in disgustingly stinky black slime. Standing still, standing inside the cold, dark toilet, Ben spied a glassless window in the wall. They clambered through this and landed on the cold, wet grass of the tower's courtyard below. For a few moments they lay there, gazing up at the moon and the stars. Ben reached out and held Granny's hand. She squeezed it tight. This is amazing, said Ben. Come on, dear, she whispered. We've barely started yet. Ben stood up and helped Granny to her feet. The old lady immediately started unwrapping the cling film that she had waterproofed her handbag with. This took several minutes. I think I may have overdone the cling film. Still, better safe than sorry. Eventually, the mile-long roll of cling film was off, and Granny took out a map. Ben had cut out of a book in the school library, so the two unlikely thieves could locate Jewel House. It was eerie being inside the Tower of London courtyard at night. The tower is said to be haunted by the ghosts of people who died there. Over the years, several guards have run away in terror, claiming that at the dead of night they had seen the ghosts of various historical figures who had died there. Now, though, there was something even stranger roaming the courtyard. Granny in a wetsuit! This way! hissed Granny, and Ben followed her down the walled passage. Ben's heart was beating so fast he thought he was going to explode. After a few minutes they were standing outside Jewel House, overlooking Tower Green, at the monument to those who were beheaded or hanged there. Ben wondered if he and Granny would be executed if they were caught stealing the crown jewels, and a shiver ran down his spine. Two beefeaters were lying on the ground, snoring loudly, their immaculate black and red uniforms emblazoned with E.R. were becoming soiled on the wet ground. Granny's herbal sleeping tonic in the chocolate cake had worked, but for how long? As she hurried past them, Granny let out a familiar quacking sound from her bum. One of the guards' noses crinkled at the smell. Ben held his breath, not just because of the smell, but because he was afraid. Was Granny's bottom burp going to wake the guard up and ruin everything? An eternal moment passed. Then the guard opened one eye. Oh no! Granny pushed Ben back and raised her handbag as if to clobber the beef eater with it. This is it, thought Ben. We'll be hanged. But then the guard closed his eye again and continued snoring. Granny, please try to control your bottom, hissed Ben. I didn't do a thing, said Granny innocently. It must have been you. They tiptoed to the huge steel door at the front of the jewel house. Right, I just need your dad's power drill, said Granny reaching inside her handbag. With a juddering whir, she started drilling through a series of locks on the door. One by one, the metal locks crumbled to the ground. All of a sudden, the guards snored extremely loudly. <laughs> ben froze, and Granny nearly dropped the power drill. But the guards slept on, and after a few nerve-wracking minutes, the door was finally unlocked. Granny looked exhausted. Sweat was dripping down her forehead. She sat down on a low wall for a moment and then pulled out a thermos flask. Cabbage soup, she offered. No, thank you, Granny, replied Ben. He shifted uneasily. We'd better get going before the guards wake up. Rush, rush, rush. That's all you kids do these days. Patience is virtue. She poured the last of her cabbage soup down her throat and rose to her feet. Delicious. All right, let's do this, she said. The huge steel door creaked as it opened, and Ben and Granny entered Jewel House. Out of the dark came a flurry of black feathers, hitting Ben and Granny in the face. Ben was so startled he started screaming again. Shh, said Granny. What were they? 
said Ben as the winged creatures disappeared off into the black sky. That? No, dear. Ravens. There are dozens of them here. Ravens have lived at the tower for hundreds of years. This place is spooky, said Ben. His stomach nodded in fear. Especially at night, agreed Granny. Now, stay close to me, boy, because it's about to get a whole lot spookier. And it's about to get a lot spookier if you don't remember what happened in today's story. So, we're going to discuss and talk about what happened in the story. And then tomorrow we will be back for chapter 26 and 27. 26, a figure in the dark.